Ariel Hawani at UFC 114 in Las Vegas, Nevada with Michael Bisping who faces Dan Miller this Saturday night live on pay-per-view. And Mike, the first thing I got to say, I like the haircut. It's a new look. It is a new look, yeah. Well, since I was 15 years old, I had a skinhead sporting your hairstyle. And a lot of my friends now, unfortunately I'm 31 now, a lot of my friends are losing their hair. So I thought now's a good time to start exploiting the fact I still have hair and, you know, I, I just had my third kid recently, you know, maybe start to try and look a little bit more respectable in my old age. I've never had peace of mind like I have now going into a fight. This is my fourth fight in 10 months. All that time around the gym, I've really developed as a fighter. Um, you know, I've, I, I had some losses, you know, over the last year, two losses, and I take a lot of pluses you know away from that a lot of positives away from those fights and it's given me self-belief you know I've, I've fought now some of the best guys in the world and I know I can compete at that level and 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 as I said the progressions I've made now it's for me to go out there and prove to the world and and back up you know as what many you know all, all the big claims I've made in the past you know I, I believe I can do that and I believe I can make a run at the title and um, you know now I've just got to prove it and Saturday night I'm looking forward to doing that. As always, people say I talk trash and stuff all the time. I always keep it respectful um, unless they start taking pot shots. Anyway, we bumped into him. I stopped. We, we had a quick handshake and, you know, uh, you know, we busted each other's balls a little bit. Well, I tried, you know, but, he, you know, I just had a laugh. Um, and he was very quiet and reserved. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I think maybe he, he may be already beaten in his mind. No, not really. You know, I mean... It, it, He's, he's a tough guy, you know, he's a very, very tough guy. Chris Lieben hits hard, you know. But I know what you're all trying to get at, you think I can't punch, trust me. Yeah, trust me, ask Akiyama if I can punch, you know. Um, if hopefully the next one's going to go down, you know, we'll see what happens, you know. You know, I mean, it's up to him what he does and how he behaves. I, I behave, I, I believe he's behaving inappropriately. You know, we're fighting in the premier sport mixed martial arts organisation in the world, and he's kind of acting like a bit of an idiot. You know, but but that's his lookout. I just focus on what I'm doing. Um, he's selling his soul for the sake of a few YouTube hits. You know, the guy's 38 years old, and uh, he's kind of acting like a moron. You know. You know, and, and some of the things he said I don't really agree with, but uh, you know, if that's what he wants to do, that's fine. You know, if he wants to make fun out of me on the internet, that's fine, because I'll be the one laughing come Saturday night. Yeah, I, you know, I want to teach him a lesson. Obviously, I want to win the fight, I want to get paid and move closer towards a title shot, but I also want to put him in, in, play, put him in his place and make an example of him. How good does this one feel? Uh, this is truly, uh, for me, you know, it feels good. This, for me, was about pride. I'd have done this fight for free. You know, I was truly amazed, shocked, uh, 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 the things he was saying, you know, I, I truly believe he went below the belt and I couldn't believe that people were laughing at some of these things, you know, I, you know, the, the, talk trash, talk smack, whatever, but I think the guy went, you know, he went a, not one step too far, but several steps too far, you know, you know, I'm a little bit disappointed in myself for the, the antics post fight there a little bit, but, you know, I mean, the guy was, his cornerman was still screaming abuse at me, calling me a mother and this and that and you piece of after the fight, and at my cornerman, you know, he was still screaming obscenities there and then. So, you know, and Hoy is saying, oh, it was just promotion. I'm like, no, it wasn't promotion. Don't mock me on the internet, you know. My, my, my son's seen these, his friends in school, things like that, you know, mo mocking me, you know. It, you know, it, it, that, that's, not, that's not business to me, that's personal. Um, and a lot of people have been saying, you know, it would be a great main event for that one, Michael Bisping versus Chael Sonnen. Oh, okay. What do you think of that? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, I'd, I'd probably go from one guy talking I mean, straight into another one. I don't think I could handle it. I, you know, I think I've burst enough blood vessels this weekend. Um... He's the middleweight champion, he's the people champion, he's never been submitted, he's never lost a fight. Wrong, he's lost 11 fights and a lot of them by submission. Um, what is your thoughts on, on TRT and do you feel as though it is uh, giving fighters an unfair advantage? Yeah, well, you know, I've never used a steroid in my life. I've never failed a steroid test. You hear all these people talking about testosterone replacement therapy. If you've got to get your testosterone replaced, I think you're in the wrong sport for one. Um, I'm not a doctor, I know very little about it, but I would say that alpha males, you know, 
don't have low testosterone. I know I certainly don't. But I think that's why we get into an octagon or a cage and fight because we're alpha males. And if you had low levels of testosterone, you'd probably be walking around with a purse and a handbag and wearing a dress. Listen, I'm a professional fighter and I monitor what I put in my body, but I'm not anal about it. I, I get drug tested every single fight and I've never failed a drug test. And I use Tylenol, I use protein powder, I use this and that, you know what I mean? But I've never failed a drug test because I don't stick needles in my ass. I've won 23 fights, you know, professional. I've had God knows how many kickboxing fights. I'm a fighter, I was born a fighter. I've been fighting since the day I was born. And that's what, the, that's what God put me on this planet to do. And if he thinks he's gonna steamroll right through me with ease, he is a fool. Odds aren't important. What's important is who turns up on the night. Um, the best fighter doesn't w always win. The guy who fights best wins. And I'm gonna fight the best. Next question. And he can keep his fake belt this and shove it up is, his ass. This question is for him. Final question, where do you go from here? Well, you know, I mean, I wanted to win tonight. I wanted to win and fight for the title. Uh, I know I'm good enough, you know. In my mind, I just beat Charles Sonnen for two rounds. He got the decision. Um, I'm going to go away. I'll keep fighting. I ain't going nowhere. I've got a long career ahead of me, and I'm one of the best, and I proved that tonight, even though I, I never got the decision. Um, you know, I'm here for a long, long time. I ain't going nowhere, and I will be the champ one day. Last week in uh, Los Angeles, you said that when you uh, see Joseph Benavidez, you will expletive strangle him. Uh, you are very close to him right now. I'm wondering, did we miss that, or, or what's well, going on? Firstly, you're not asking me any questions. That's why I'm quiet, oh. and I'm falling asleep over here. So come on, guys, step your game up. Secondly, the strangling that you're talking about has already taken place. Oh, wow. We have photographic evidence on Joseph's phone. I, I strangled him. We've settled our differences. He's apologized. He's turned down a fight with my son. Um, <laughs> and um, we're good now. We're good. He's okay. He knows his place. He's one of the little guys. I'm one of the big guys. <laughs> Ariel Hawani. We need some silence up in this piece. Wow. You Sorry. are fired up, my friend. You just kicked someone out of the uh, media workouts. Uh, did I? Yeah. I did. Warming up. Oh yeah, because you'd know. Who's <laughs> <laughs> your belt, big one? Yeah, can we get him out of here, security? Yeah, who the fuck is this guy? See you, buddy. Hard. Hey, you're a punt over there with the fucking mouth, bro. I thought you were a tough guy. Um, when yes, have I uh, outright um, rooted or shown just, a bias towards Chris Weidman? It's just Chris Weidman, Chris Weidman, Chris Weidman. That's Are you not it. feeling the love? Is that it? Are yeah, you I couldn't give a damn about your love. It seems like uh, you're, you're like a jilted lover No, here. no, not at all, not at all. It's just, you know, I, I just... Play, playing around on Twitter, mate, oh, okay. you know what I mean? Come on, there's definitely... I think you have an erection for Chris Weidman. Wow. I do. You went there. I, I went there and I'm yeah. staying there. I do, that's why I tweeted it. No one even knows who this guy is. <laughs> I didn't know who he was. He came up to me yesterday. I said, hey, Mike, how you doing? And I shook his hand and, and I, I ruffled his head like that. I thought it was like a 12-year-old kid. I thought it was a fan. I said, hey, what's up? How you doing, buddy? <laughs> and then I walked off and everyone's like, that was Joseph Benavides. I was like, no way. Twitter's a fabulous thing, you know, because... Um, you know, you, you type something, but they don't, you know, you can't, unless you put a smiley face or whatever, you right. can't tell you're Sorry, joking. Perhaps issue Sorry, that yeah, I had with yeah, your Yeah, but I'm not in the habit of putting smiley faces right. on the end of my text, you know. <laughs> maybe when I was at school or, you know, maybe if it was a bit like that, I would do. You know, I know you do that. Final uh, question. Obviously, Anderson Silva's fighting next month. There's a lot that can happen. Yeah. Will you be disappointed if your next fight isn't for the UFC middleweight title? Um, yes and no. I love what I do. I love being a part of the UFC and I... A fighter is who I am. That's what I was telling myself before the fight. This is what I do. This is who I am. Staring at myself in the mirror. This is what I do. And I will do this as long as there's air in my body. I'll do this for as long as I can. And whether my next fight's for the belt or not, I'll still continue to love this and do this and be proud to do it. And I'll keep doing it until I get my shot. And whether that's in my next fight or my fifth fight, I will get a shot at the title. And I will be world champion one day. Trust me, I'm going nowhere.
There were some questions directed at Alan Belcher and I don't feel that he answered them correctly. You know, they asked what the uh, what a win over me would mean to his career and he gave a very run-of-the-mill answer that I'm sure somebody with not too much brain power would normally suggest. And I was like, no, let me correct you there, Alan. Uh, a win over me would be the biggest win of your pathetic career. And I think uh, that that's accurate. He's um, come out of his shell a little bit, you know, for this fight. He's uh, tried to promote the fight and done these videos, etc. Um, some of which I've taken exception to and, you know, he, he's kind of annoyed me. He did one where he'd superimposed himself onto an image of me uh, getting knocked out by Dan Henderson. And, you know, on the video, he's, he's laughing his head off he's in hysterics. I thought that was disrespectful to me and all fighters, really, you know. Uh, it's a cruel sport. But, you know, and one of those, one of the things that happens is sometimes we get knocked out. I thought as a fighter, he would know better than to mock somebody getting knocked out. Well, you know, obviously he doesn't. And also, you know, he's never even fought anybody of the caliber of Dan Henderson or Vito Belfort or anyone like that. He's been fighting mid, mid card talent his entire career and he should know better. So Saturday night, you know, I'm going to teach him a lesson. Is he on your level? Um... I, I honestly don't, I, I don't believe so, no. He has average tight boxing, he has poor boxing, he has poor wrestling, he has a decent ground game apparently. I've never seen him going for submissions really or a dangerous guard or sweeps or anything like that. A, a, a big part of the fight game is, is mental and I think that's what sets us apart and that's why he gets beat of guys like Jason Day and that's why I finish him in the first round. Listen, I, I, I've just recently turned 34, I've still got a long time left in this sport. Um, almost getting to a title shot and then losing the fight, that it's not going to be the story of my career, you know. Uh, every time I've lost a fight, I've made big changes and, and, and I've came back a much better fighter. I've done that this time and uh, sometimes it takes a loss, you know, to, to realise what you were doing wrong. I'm going to beat CB Dalloway on Saturday night and then hopefully I get a quick turnaround and that will be successful. Then I'll start talking about title shots again. In the meantime, Rockhold will beat Weidman as much as it pains me to say that and then um, hopefully I get my rematch with Rockhold this time next year, hmm. you're looking at the new middleweight yes, champion of the world. There you go. Yeah. There you go. It's weird. I have this reputation of being a trash talker. I, I don't necessarily think I deserve that. Yes, I have talked my fair share of trash, for one of a better <laughs> expression. It's a stupid expression. Uh, but if somebody says something to me, I will respond, you know. And yeah, sometimes I might say something, but uh, that's not necessarily what I'm trying to achieve. The other day he did say that he believes he's going to retire me and that kind of irked me a little bit, that kind of pissed me off and so I've got some choice words for him and listen, never underestimate my ability to be a prick. <laughs> so, uh, you know, tomorrow at, at the media day when we square up, things might escalate a little bit really? because, yeah, I do take offence at him saying he's going to retire me. Demetrius, you know, wouldn't even go as far as to say, uh, you know, I'm definitely going to win this fight. And, and we had an open discussion about this before, you know, in front of the journalists. And he said, well, no, I don't want to put myself in that position, you know, because if I go out there and I lose, then it doesn't look too good. I, I feel foolish. And I said, yeah, but, but hold on. As a fighter, I'm willing to take that bet. I'm willing to say, I'm willing to, to put it on the line. And if, if I don't pull it off, then yeah, I'll, I'll look like a fool, you know. But so what? I'm confident. I believe I'm going to win this fight. And I'm willing to go out there and put my name to it and, and risk a bit of humiliation. That's how confident I am. And I said, you need to be more confident in that, Demetrius. You're a, a massively dominant champion. You need to put it out there and say, listen, I'm here. I'm Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. I'm going to win this fight. And, and, and please tune in and watch. You yeah. ever look back at the early Michael and say, gosh. Yeah, no, for sure. For Are you sure. embarrassed by it? Uh, uh, some, s yeah, some of the things I've done. Really? Said, like what? Uh, oh my God, I don't know. You know, um, I wish I could have been a little more humble, perhaps, really? back in the day. And, you know, cer certainly, yeah, I mean, like, for example, after the Matt Hamill fight, you know, I acted like an absolute idiot, you know, and I look back and I think, oh, you could have done without that one. You know, the Jorge Rivera fight isn't necessarily one of those, you know. He, he fired me up and I feel I was well within my rights. Um, so, you know, I stand by that one. But, yeah, I mean, sometimes... I look back on interviews and I think, oh God, oh, turn it off, turn it off, please. Really? I can't, yeah, wow. please turn this off. Am I really saying this stuff? You know, but everybody's like that. You might be the most popular fighter in the history of the sport, not to not win a belt, to not fight for a belt. Sure, not, not at all. Um, the reason I haven't fought for a belt is no one else's fault. Apart from mine, or perhaps the Athletic Commission's for allowing the use of testosterone replacement therapy. I'll just get that one in. Yeah. Uh, um, um, <laughs> The UFC have put me in number one contender matchups three times. I lost those fights. 
You know, what can I say? Yes, they were too. Chael Sonnen, check. Vito Belfort, check. And Dan Henderson, check. All on testosterone replacement therapy and everything else that we've, you know, that, that we don't know about. You know, I was with Jason Prillo in the gym the other day and he's very close with BJ Penn, obviously. Coached him for a long time. And he said, um, I was talking to BJ last night on the phone. I said, oh yeah? He said, BJ said, it's crazy. It's crazy, bruh. The Bispin's in the gym, man. Or however they talk. I don't think he's Indian. Close enough. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy, bruh. He's in the gym and he's, he's still training every day. He's the same age as me. And he's training with these kids and he's fighting world-class competition still at his age. And... Uh, Perillo said that BJ was saying it's crazy. What motivates him? How does he still get that motivation? And I turned around to Perillo. I said, that's very easy. I said, BJ Penn's a two-time different weight class world champion. I haven't had that. I haven't achieved that. And until I have achieved that, then I will still keep applying myself. And I will still keep training like a hungry, motivated man. Because I do. You know, I train very, very hard. Of course... It's harder to get those wheels turning because I am older and things like that. But once everything's uh, fully lubricated and we are still talking about Pfizer, <laughs> then uh, I can pound really hard. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, it's been a hell of a journey. Well done. Thank and you so much. And it's not over yet, my friend. It is not. It is not. This is, uh, this is not. This is your life. No, this no. Is, this is the beginning. We talked the other day about how you've never lost two straight. Is there something about having your back against the wall coming off a loss that makes you perform particularly better? Um, I don't know, to be honest. I mean, obviously, I, I, I'm always as motivated as I possibly can be going into every fight, you know, but um, I don't know. I don't know, you know. I mean, uh, I, I love doing this. I, lo I love being a part of this sport. I love being a part of the UFC, and um, I want to do it for a long time. And winning, losing two, sorry, in a row doesn't go hand in hand with being one of the best in the world. And I, I think I am. I know I can get that belt one day. You know, I've just got to keep winning fights though. Here he is. See you in London, my friend. Yeah, see you. Right. Good luck, buddy. Good luck. Say good hi luck. for your family. Right? No, no Viagra. No, no. <laughs> no, just my buns to your face. Hey, don't. Relax. Don't worry about it. Don't worry my man. chin to your yes. chin. Yes. Yes, you old. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm old. You're old. But, you know, I'm, I'm old, but I'm more smart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm champion for a long time, remember? Yes, on steroids. Remember? No, no, I, no, I, I want to stay. No, but no, give me a hug, give me a hug. Come on, man. I know, I want to stand your frustration for never. Never go for the belt. But this is your chance. Good luck. Good luck. I see you in London. I ain't gonna need luck. It's good. I see you in London. Bye, sweetheart. Hey. Hey. Fuck you. Love you, man. Listen, Anderson's a great fighter, he's achieved many, many things, but the fact of the matter is he tested positive for, for performance enhancing drugs in his last fight. Apparently that was the first time he's been tested. Uh, that's what he said, his words, not mine. A cynic would lead me to lead one to believe that he was using his whole career. So, you know, shame on him. You know, how he calls himself a martial artist and then takes performance enhancing drugs is beyond me. It really is. And I think when I beat Anderson, I've won four out of my last five. I've been a perennial contender for 10 years in the UFC. This is my 11th year with the company. Uh, the only guy to beat me in my last five fights is the world champion. When I beat Anderson, I should get my damn title shot. Dana, come on. Anderson, you take all the steroids, all the dick pills he wants. And you can stick him with a sun don't shine. Beats do not prosper. Steroids are for cowards. I want this more. Friday nights, I'm there by myself pitch black, out running the pavements, screaming because I'm pushing my body so hard, pushing it to the limit. If I'm running past people or anyone that had the window down in the cars, they think this guy's crazy. Ah, ah, ah. On my own, nobody, by myself. I guarantee he's not doing that. He doesn't want this like I want it. Fact, and I'm gonna win this fight. Um, I'm a huge Anderson Silva fan. I always was, you know, and the fact that now obviously he has disdain for me, you know, yeah, I don't want that. I don't want, when this fight is over, I don't want him to go away thinking, that prick Michael Bisping, I can't stand that guy, win or lose, you know. Um, I, I was always a huge fan. Yes, I was disheartened with what happened. Uh, and I'm here to promote a fight and I'm here to um, engage in psychological warfare. So I've, I've been just trying to make him doubt himself, things like that, of course. But he wouldn't shake my hand. I, I, I see that once again as a sign of weakness. I see this fact that he's so emotional. 
um, that he was he, trying to intimidate me. Listen, you're not going to intimidate me, you know. We're all far too long in the tooth. I've, I've done this for far too long to be intimidated at a stare down. So, lighten up, Anderson. Everybody here, thank you all for supporting me throughout the years. It means the world to me. When I step into that cage tomorrow, I'm doing it on behalf of myself and Great Britain. Thank you all. This man is a cheat. This man is a fraud. And I will make you pay for your mistakes tomorrow night, my friend. All the needles in your ass, all the steroids will not help you. You pussy. And I always knew I could beat the guy. And, you know, I, I did that. Uh, I, I thought I won the majority of the rounds. Of course, round three went to him, of course. But other than that, I thought I controlled the fight. Um, what's going through my mind? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I have done, been here many, many times. Um, relief. Hmm. Relief. That's Yeah, if, if I could sum up the emotion, it's relief. It's always relief. You know, obviously you have your critics. Obviously, I'm at a certain age now. And people are always trying to write me off. You know, so it's relief for now. I, I did it. I, I overcame that hurdle, you know, and and I, I proved to everybody I could do it. But again, before we know it, I'm going to be back in the same position again. Why didn't you ask for the title shot after? You, you just beat the greatest of all time. That was your. Why did, why did you? Is it yeah. just because of the relief? I did don't you? know. I don't know. I should have done it. It never occurred to me at the time. I guess it was just relief and, and, and the emotion. For me, this was a personal test, a personal challenge, and, and I overcame that. So I wasn't thinking about my next fight. I was thinking about, you know, I just thought about my children, my family, and uh, that's why I got a little emotional. So I wasn't thinking about my next fight. Listen, I know I'm expected to lose. I know everybody's got me as the underdog, but I don't see myself as the underdog. I'm performing amazingly, uh, as if I've done a full camp, but I'm fresh, I'm explosive, I'm strong. Whenever I start my training camps, I always feel like this. And then by the end of eight weeks, I, you know, I've learned now, I've learned now, because this is the first time I've had a short notice fight. This is the way to do it, to look after yourself and turn it up. I had two and a half weeks, two and a half weeks of intense work. I feel fantastic. I feel strong. I feel explosive. I've got no injuries and, and, and I'm still, my, my nervous system is still firing. A lot of the times, eight weeks, you know, it's a long time. And because it means so much to me, because I train so hard, I drive myself into, uh, into the floor. You know, I'm coming in there fresh, believe you me. Look at me, I'm an ounce of fat on me. I don't need eight weeks. I've had 26 fights in the UFC. I've had over 40 professional fights. I've had God knows how many kickboxing matches, jiu-jitsu tournaments. I won the silver medal in jiu-jitsu when I was 16 years old in New Zealand. Uh, this is a lifetime's work. This is not an accident. I am not here because, you know, because Jack Ray didn't want to take the fight. I'm here because I am the number one contender. I'm the logical matchup. Rockhold has a victory. I get to get revenge at that, and I get to be world champion all at the same time this is amazing two weeks two days two hours i don't care i'll take on anyone anytime any place certainly this asshole i think people have always been drawn away from confidence for some reason that people are haters they want to see you lose some people strive to achieve things and some people strive to hate you know if you think something the likelihood of it happening is very slim if you believe in something, if you know something is going to happen, if you're confident in that situation, you will achieve things in life. That's how you overcome things. That's how you put yourself out there. You believe it and you achieve it. And that's what I do. I know what I'm going to do. I know that I'm better than this. Sounds like I the know worst self-help self book out. you've ever read. Conceive, <laughs> believe, achieve. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. You're talking like you're like this dominant champion. You... You just won the belt. This is your first defense. It's not like you're Anderson Silva, who I just beat, by the way. Okay, this is your first defense. You're gonna lose the belt. And just watch get the used difference. Watch the difference. What happens? All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll separate myself listen, in the back. I'll listen, show bro, you everybody and the here world knows that I'm that much you better than you fight. and Anderson. Everybody here knows you won the first fight. Congratulations. Yeah. Good job. Every watch. fight is different, my friend. Every fight is different. You know that. Hey. So, what? You, you, you got something to say. Finish your sentence. You said, Busy. hey. You're just an Finish average it. bloke. You're just an average bloke. Good use of English I'm terminology. I'm a fucking samurai. I'm going to come oh, in there silent, the fuck is undetected, this? and I'm going to knock you out. I'm going to make my believe, kill, achieve, and I'm going to fucking stop be it. out. You're making a I'll be out on yourself. the next contract. Watch me. All right, buddy. All right, listen. What are you going to do? Silent. Kick? Undetected. A left done. Kick, a right over, hook. That's all you got. Next. So predictable. So predictable, buddy. Hey, guess what? Yeah, right go ahead. You're going to see something completely different. I haven't even used my left leg this whole camp. 
Ooh. I haven't grappled a bit just to let you know. Come, oh my God. come get me. Well, why did last time you turn into a wrestler all of a sudden? I've been boxing this whole camp. You couldn't get near me. You couldn't get a glove on me. You had to come in, try and wrestle me, take me down, stick a headbutt on me while you're at it as well. I didn't well. take you, you down. Know? I didn't go for a You tried down. to take me down. Don't no, lie. No, clinch fighting is completely Whatever. different. I can't wait for Saturday, guys. Yeah, I can't you're... wait. Michael, I, I get to walk in be a short on two weeks notice. I get to punch him in the face and become world champion at the same time. I am a happy man. Yeah, Michael. It's I, my destiny. I actually wanted to ask you. Yeah, it is. You just said, believe it. It will come real. It is my destiny. I believe, Luke. Knowing I believe. Something. Knowing something and making it happen. Watch. I believe it, buddy. Yeah. Dreams do come true. You believe it. You better work for it, too. I, listen, I'll take a win anywhere I can take it, but make no mistake. I'm looking to finish this guy. Simple as that. You guys don't want to see me going out there and outpointing him. I want to punish this guy. He knocked me out. He gave me another dig. Good for him. You know, well done. I'm going to knock him out, believe you me. And then I'll help him up off the canvas because I'm not a, I'm not a thug. I don't do that. You know what I mean? But I'll knock him out, believe you me. He's going to be out cold. Who wants to see Hendo get knocked the F out? Come on, make some noise. Guys, this is the pinnacle of my career. It doesn't get any better than this. I'm the champion, defending it in Manchester. Someone shut this dickhead up over here. Mate, you're going down, pal. Fuck you. Fuck Henderson. Manchester, let's fucking do this. Fuck you. I'm going to do, do the biggest fight as possible. And I want to make One gives a fuck. No one gives a fuck, George. Everybody, I'm sorry I'm late. Dana, my apologies. George, my apologies. Um, Everybody gives a fuck that you're late. Sit down. No, I'm sure. <laughs> I think Vegas got the best out of you, unfortunately. Yeah, it doesn't matter because I'm going to get the fucking best out of you. So shut the fuck up. Now you Listen, are. Now you are. You're talking about being a fucking welterweight. You are a welterweight, okay? I'm a middleweight. I can't wait to fucking square up against you. Stand up. Stand up and look at the size of me and look at the size of you. Go back to fucking Canada. George, listen, while you were away, because you were so scared of everybody taking steroids, I was man enough to still be fighting those guys. You went away, you went and fucking chased aliens. I don't know what you did. No one gives a fuck where you were or what you did. You're coming back, the sport is a different place, game over. I'll go out on an all-night fucking bender and still beat you, pal. I'll fucking, I'll, I won't even train. Look at the state here, you little fucking midget. Where's your fucking belt? You don't have one. The sport moved on, buddy. The sport moved on. Well, I, I could have stole. I could have stole one while you were uh, out in Vegas drinking. Stop it, please. You're embarrassed. Hey, you're, you're saying I'm embarrassing myself. Please stop it. You're embarrassing yourself. To beat up that that drunk man right there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why is the onus on me being fucking drunk? What's that gonna do with anything? I've been drunk throughout my entire fucking career. <laughs> Danny will testify to that. Why does that make this fight any fucking different? Why does that matter? I'm English. <laughs> I'm in fucking Vegas. I'm gonna fight. Hey, when is the fight, George? When's the fight? When do you wanna fight? Because I'll fight right now. <laughs> I'll fight right now, motherfucker. That's the difference between you and me. So you look at me. You, you don't scare me, not even one bit. Not, not even one bit. I'm not trying to scare you. <laughs> I know, no, you really bitch. don't. I'm not trying to scare you, but here's the fact. I'm a real fighter. I'm a real fighter. You're an athlete, and good for you. You're a very, very good athlete, but you're an athlete, I'm a fighter. I will beat George, everybody knows that. George, good luck, buddy. I wish you the best, I respect you, I respect your camp, and you see that stupid fucking little smug look on your face there, like you've got some, like you've got some plan, like you know something we don't know. What do you know that I don't know? Does a, a lot of things, You fucking lizard. Um. I'm hearing that his mentor, Christoph Madu, uh, has, has walked away from the camp, doesn't want any part of it, says he's too slow, doesn't like the way he's performing. See, he's bulked up and got bigger, and you can see that he's got a little fat head, you know, the little rolls in the back of the neck that people get. He doesn't always have that, but he does now, and that slows you down. It slows you down so you can be as big as he wants. He's still going to be the smallest little shit that I've ever faced. George St. Pierre takes people down, right? He's got a good stand-up game, decent, yeah. decent to where he can mix it up for a bit and then take people down. That's what he's gonna do in this fight. Make no mistake, he's not gonna stand with me and I couldn't give a shit. He's saying I'm terrified of him taking me down. I'm not terrified, that is, 
something that was abundantly clear to me, the name, ever since George St. Pierre was mentioned, I thought, here we go, we've got the fight avoider. You know when people take you, they take you down, they hide in your guard, and they come up, oh, boom, elbow back down. Boom, hide, 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 elbow. That's all he's gonna do. I'll stand there on my feet, I'm gonna knock him out. I'm looking to take care of my family. I do this with my wife and children and to give them a great life so that when I'm retired, they can live a good life and hopefully, hopefully there's even a little bit left over for their kids. So we'll see, you know? And if down the line you guys say something nice about me, then that's great. <laughs> if not, kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Boo this motherfucker. This is how stupid you look with those fucking headbands. You look like a fucking idiot. Hey, George, these are your people. These are your fucking people, man. What the fuck? <laughs> Listen, George is a very good wrestler, but you know what the best takedown in the game is? A left hook. That's how I won this fucking belt, and that's how I'm going to keep hold of this belt. Fucking slowing down. This ain't going the distance, Rob. Uh, this is not going... The George, this ain't going the distance, pal. Look at that. Look at his face like he's got a, a secret, like he knows. You don't know shit, pal. You don't know shit. Ooh, I've got bullied as a kid. Why the fuck you think I do this? Why do you think Cody does this? I'm sure we all got bullied a little bit, but George is special. George is a boring bastard. George does take people down. I've only told the truth. Only told the truth. Is George a great UFC, MMA, martial artist? Yes, he is. Have I prepared accordingly to beat that guy and raise my game? Yes, I have. Thank you, George, for just making me put that nail in the coffin, because you're good. So I raised my game. No, I don't regret shit. I regret having to speak to you, though. That's the only thing I regret today. George is a fucking pussy. That's my thoughts. All you guys that are booing, unlucky motherfuckers, because tomorrow night, that fucking pussy is going down. Four years, he steps away. He's a drug cheat, he's a pussy, and tomorrow, he's gonna be a loser. Boo me, fuck you. I don't know if you saw it, I just got choked out, so uh, 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 we'll see. But listen, I, I love doing what I do. You know, I'm from a small town in the northwest of England. I never thought I'd be here headlining Madison Square Garden. And uh, I'll be damned if the last time I do it is getting choked out on TV. So, um, you know, it wasn't my night, but that's the way with professional sports. You know, one man or one team win and one man or one team lose, you know.